What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Sam here. Sam from the future. Um, this intro is about a week after this video that you're about to see. I uh, had some trouble with my video equipment. Uh, had the intro all done and everything and the SD card um, corrupted on me. So now I'm making the intro a week later after the trip. So we went out to the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway in the Red River Gorge area. Uh, Daniel Boone National Forest and did some off-roading last week testing out the new rock jock anti-rock uh, Was a good good time. We had me and Greg brought his uh, Black JKU out and then his buddy Daryl has a pretty nice um, CJ7 LS swab day 16 in front on 38 uh, Swampers you'll see in the video and we all got out there and had a blast It was kind of muddy so it made it a little bit more interesting so, but you'll see that here, in a, here, uh, here in a second. So, um, thank you. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you everybody for subscribing. If you haven't already, you know, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big old thumbs up. Uh, go check out the merch store if you want to support the channel. Uh, all the stuffs in the description below. So, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, this is going to be a pretty lengthy video. Uh, so sit back and watch. Grab some popcorn and some drinks and. I kind of cut it up and make it flow as good as possible, but there's a lot of footage, so. And I lost a lot of footage with that corrupted SD card, but. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the video. Oh, also too, I'm doing some narrating over it, see how that works out. So, uh, just trying to do stuff every time to make these videos better for you guys. All right, let's get into it. So we start out on Mountain Springs Road. This is part of the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. This trail is a pretty easy to moderate trail, depending on when you go out there. Uh, so we went after a couple of rains. Uh, it was pretty muddy, as you can see, but we didn't really have a bad time. Mud made it more interesting for us. So this is the first time that I've actually been on this trail before. I've been wanting to go on it for a while. And so we actually got to do it this time, which I was pretty excited about. Um, this trail uh, is pretty lengthy trail. Um, it is, uh, there's only about three obstacles, really obstacles in it. There's this muddy mud hole that has a bypass. And then there is a, a little bit of a drop you'll see here coming up soon. And then there is a climb to get out of it, go back to go back to the main road. But this is a very heavily uh, traffic trail we didn't see anybody on it the day we were on it but a lot of people use this trail because it's part of the Daniel Boone backcountry byway as you can see here Daryl is having no trouble with this mud hole it is pretty deep those are our 38s so uh, make sure make yourself aware if you're actually on, on Mountain Springs Road that mud hole is pretty deep uh, yeah he's just crawling right through it so after this uh, the trail is pretty easy um, we didn't have any problems just messing around pretty much, just crawling right through, having no problems. So on Mountain Springs Road, there is an old abandoned house, as you can see right here. This old abandoned house is uh, proud, is pretty much the halfway marker between the trail. Um, 
Most of the trail so far has been easy little mud holes. Nothing too big. There are this next part on the trail is probably the worst part besides the in climb out. Um, you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. So you see here, Greg's being cautious because, oh, there he goes, three-wheeling. The passenger side has a very deep dip. It's probably about a 35-inch tires with our depth worth of um, drop here. You can see he's got his driver's side tire way up in the air. Uh, he's going to ease on down here. Um, very, be very careful right here. This could be a tipping point if you're in a lower um, vehicle like a Cherokee or Grand Cherokee or uh, Tacoma or something like that. So just watch out. I can see Melody out here trying to get some video for me. Um, I go through it here in a second, and you can see the difference between uh, our lifts and our uh, suspension setup. As you can see, it's pretty rutted right here. So there's a lot of mud and water, standing water. So... Right after a rain, this would be very interesting. And you could also see there was a uh, wiring harness laying there. But here I come down this trail here. I just ease on down here. I'm riding, I'm in first gear, low range, just letting it crawl down. As you can see, passenger side goes down into the hole and my anti-rock's doing its job perfect, flexing out. Doesn't lift a tire, it looks like. Didn't feel like nothing from the inside. Go right on down. You can see all the mud and the standing water inside of it. So that's gonna get deeper and deeper. But watch out for that stump on the pasture side too. That's, uh, that's a window getter or side of a door getter right there. Uh, Daryl's gonna come down and have no problems with this because it's on 38s compared to my 35s and bricks. So as you saw there, Daryl had no problem with that. After that, the trail kind of winds on down here. And um, this is going out the back side of it. Uh, this part right here is a uh, little slick, little rocks area. And this, after this is the worst, probably the second worst part after that part we just did. Um, this is a climb up and out of the trail. Um, this is the third obstacle in my opinion on mountain springs road you'll see here here in a second um how we all take this trail So this is the climb out of Mountain Springs Road. It's a very slick, very muddy, rutted trail. You'll see here, Greg goes first. He's on some BFG all-terrains. You can see they're caked in mud. Um, he tries to work his way up here on the far right side. Uh, as you can see, it is slick. It is super slick. So he's locked up front and rear and he gets pretty far. He could have probably made it the first shot, but uh, he's being kind of cautious. So I'll let you sit here and watch him uh, attempt this.
So as you see here, Greg's been trying to work it back and forth, trying different lines and stuff like that. He finally backs up here and just gives it the beans here and he'll get up at this trail, this obstacle, by backing up all the way and just flooring it. So. And there he goes, made it up, no problem. Now, me on the other hand, I'm right after him. I had uh, front locker issues. You can see right here, my, I have the, I have it pressed, but it keeps flashing on my dash. I've had this happen for a while. I need to check the um, actual connector on the front axle for the diff. But uh, once I get everything situated here, I'm gonna go right up this trail, no problem. All right, now Daryl's gonna give it a shot here. He's gonna make everybody look bad. Uh, so sit back and watch, this is pretty good. And just like that, obstacle conquered. Thanks to a big old LS. And with that, that is the end of the Mountain Springs Trail. Now we are jumping over to the trail I was told is called Hard One. It's part of the Kentucky Adventure Tour, the CAT, which is another trail system like the Danny Boone Back Backcountry Byway. Um, we are heading right now to a pretty, no pretty nice cave that I've been to a bunch of times. It's really cool. It's called Stump Cave. It's a really nice cave. You can fit a bunch of vehicles inside. You'll see here in a second um, how cool it is. Uh, the trail getting to it used to be pretty bad, but uh, here recently somebody's took over the property and made it uh, pretty easy to get to. So uh, no hard trails this time, but still good a good area to check out. Nice scenery, easy trails. Don't have to worry about anything like that, just the good views and the good times.
Yeah, it's a nice spot. Uh, Stump Cave is really nice. I've been here a bunch of times. I always like to try to come back. It's a good spot. So Stump Cave is a trail, a circle trail. You just go out one way and come right back in the other way. It's easy now. They used to be really bad ditches, and uh, but uh, they cleaned it up really well. So it's an easy trail now. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and go check it out. Uh, we ended up going back out onto Hard One down towards Sand Lick Road towards, uh, it's called the uh, playground area. You'll see here in a second. Uh, it's just a little area with a little rock to play on. And then we end up going up towards um, a trail called Slider on a ring road that goes up all around the top of a ridge towards another trail called um, Widowmaker towards the off-road park called Hollerwood. So this trail right here that I'm on is uh, a downhill. It's really, this trail used to be bad. It used to have bad ruts in it, but they also cleaned this up because this is uh, forestry land. So we just head on down this road. There's a couple mud holes here and there. Nothing too crazy. Still easy riding. Nothing too crazy. The crazy stuff happens later on. Well, after playing around on that little rock down there, we ended up going up the trail towards the trail I was talking about earlier called Slider. This trail, this ridge trail that goes around the ridge of this uh, path or this valley here, 
Uh, it has a lot of mud holes in it, stinky mud holes, uh, and there's some deep ones in this trail. Uh, and there's a nice little climb here too, here shortly. So, but other than that, it's a pretty easy trail uh, to get around to get up on top of this ridge. Uh, we ended up uh, we ended up running into some people actually for the first time today uh, on that day, and yeah, so. We just cruise around up here for a while, and then we'll hit this nice little uphill rock climb here soon. All right, this is the uh, hill climb I was talking about. Uh, as you can see, Daryl's going first. He ended up in front of everybody, which is a good thing because we let the guy with the best Jeep go first to see if our uh, little Jeeps can go if where he can go. So he uh, makes short work of this, as you can see here. After Daryl was Greg and his Jeep, and he will try to make this climb next. Nice three wheel by Greg right there, keeping three wheels on the ground, and he continues to go up the hill. Definitely. I got 
Oh, you got the, oh. <laughs> keep going. You good? Keep going. You still all right? And I was last on this one. Uh, you know, Greg made it look pretty easy for him for even doing it so i thought i'd go up here and uh you know one shot it didn't end up happening like that uh it's hard to pretty it's hard to see when you're inside and uh, everybody was pointing for me to go towards that big rock on your my driver's side here i couldn't see what they were doing and all that kind of stuff but you know we uh, ended up making it eventually it would have helped out if i would have aired down my tires a bit but uh yeah i'm running full uh, road tire pressure 30 35 psi so if i'd had them down to about 15 or 20 uh i probably would have made it easy uh but yeah whatever you learn always air down people even a little even a little bit helps Yeah, I'm over here beating on this thing. I shouldn't be beating on it. I should try to, you know, methodically think about it. But then I finally do get it. So, uh, you know, next time you learn, every time you go out, you got to learn something. So next time, make it better. This mud hole right here was pretty deep. You can see how off camber this is too. That is, that is pretty wicked right there for a mud hole after that hill climb. After you get to the top of this, after this obstacle, you'll get to the top of the hill. This is where we ended up meeting these guys and these uh, FJs and Land Cruisers here. They were sitting at the top of the hill. This is where Slider is. This is a pretty gnarly trail. Nothing nothing I want to get into on my Jeep. And I'd have a built rig for that. But uh, we ended up heading down this way. And this is where the deep, deep mud hole on this trail is. This mud hole ended up swallowing Daryl's Jeep. Got mud, uh, got water inside of his Jeep. He's on 38s. So, yeah, there's some deep mud holes on this side. So this is one of the first deep hole mud holes we encounter. I actually had to, I got to break out my winch that I don't even get to use very often. Uh, Greg ended up getting uh, pretty much turtled in between two mud holes here. Uh, his breakover angle isn't that great. He, uh, it says he has a, they said he, when he bought it, it has a three inch lift. Oh, I don't think that it is. And then I just, there oh, I go. God. I uh, stepped in that mud there. So that was cool. But uh, yeah, we ended up, ended up, pulling him back a bit and he gets another he gets to have another go at it
as you can tell, it is pretty thick mud, so uh, he doesn't have enough speed to get over it. There's not enough room to run, get a run at it or anything. He's pretty much stuck. He does get over it, but then he gets stuck again. So he ends up just pulling cable and getting winched out, which is a smart thing to do instead of breaking your stuff. So always pull cable first before breaking your stuff or trying to pull cable first. After they get Greg t pulled out here, it's my turn and I make sure that I'm not going to get stuck. So I go through it with a little bit more speed than Greg went through because I'm not going to get stuck. So this next part right here, I, I'm missing some video from this, but this is the hole that Daryl ended up getting uh, water in his Jeep. On the far left side here where I'm standing, this area down in here is deep. You can see him, how it's already getting deep right there. We ended up riding this right side bridge all the way around. So yeah, it was very deep. Thankfully he went first because if Greg would have went first, Greg would have got sunk. After this, the trail ended up just winding on down back towards the valley here, back towards um, Hollerwood and Little Widowmaker and Big Widowmaker. Um, I ended up hearing this rattling noise, knocking noise coming from the front of my Jeep. Uh, I got out and inspected, and it ended up turning out to be the bracket holding my anti-rock on. The factory bolt had snapped off at the head of it. Um, the uh, So... It snapped off. It was stuck in the frame. The bolt head of the bolt was uh, completely missing. Uh, you could feel the end of the bolt in the frame. So luckily, we were done for the day pretty much. We just had to make a couple little trails out. No big deal. Um, we ended up going up here towards Hollerwood. And um, we uh, when we got to a safe spot that I could pull off to the side and have people come out and be able to go around me, I uh, ended up taking off the sway bar completely, and that's how I ended up driving it home. Uh, no big deal. I've already been driving without a sway bar. If you saw my last video, you saw where my old Rubicon sway bar was broken, so it's no big deal. I'm used to driving without a sway bar. I'd rather take it off and uh, not have to deal with uh, ended up breaking more or anything like that as of now the sway bar is in perfectly good, good, good condition all i have to do is um fix get some new bolts and put it back together so no big deal but uh yeah after this we ended up going up the hill here and uh ending our day
Well, you never like to make on the side of the trail repairs, but you know, sometimes you can't get past it. Luckily, I just did this install not too long ago, so it was fresh in my mind. I knew exactly what to get. Uh, I always like to bring tools with me. Uh, sometimes I bring a little bit too many tools, but you never know what you're going to need. You know, that one tool you don't have is the one you need. So uh, I'm just taking the lower link off the sway bar here. I ended up just sliding it right out. And uh, I took the other arm off the other side, on the pasture side, and then sliding this one out as a complete unit and uh, left the driver's side uh, mount attached to the Jeep. Um, after that, we ended up going towards, uh, we were ended up getting into the Hollerwood side of the, of land here. This is the Hollerwood Park up here. Um, we ended up driving out this way on back to the main road. All right, so that's it. That's the video. Um, if you stuck around, appreciate you on that one because it's probably, it's a long video. But uh, let's walk out here to the Jeep and I'll show you that it has no sway bar. We made it home without a sway bar attached. Uh, like I said, uh, it really, it broke on this side. So no more sway bar right now. I have to get, I have to get an easy out for it. And I, um, I have to get an easy out and I have to get, yeah. Some bolts, they want $8 for those factory bolts. So I'm not doing that. I'm gonna have to go to a hardwood store. Hard, hard, uh, we're gonna have to go to a hardware store and uh, get that fixed up. But here is the actual rock truck. So bar right here. I just got it laying here. Sway bar's fine. I didn't want to break it anymore. So that's why I just completely took it off the Jeep. But uh, yeah. So next video, give you a little sneak peek if you're still here. Yeah, that happened. So if you're a WK viewer and you wanna see some stuff about the WK, uh, come on back to the next video. If you're still here, it's probably like an hour long right now. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hit that uh, subscribe button, give this video a big old thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, see y'all later, bye-bye.